Disclaimer. This review features a collectible item and it's for adult collectors ages 13 and up only. It is not intended for children. So if you are age 13 or below, please stop watching this video now. Thank you. here and welcome back to a new action figure review on my channel so today I'm continuing on and actually finishing up my review of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TMNT Mutant Mayhem figurines or you know the first series of figurines and this is the the second part or episode 2 I'm not sure what to call it uh, of this mini series because I actually did a review already uh, of the four uh, turtle brothers and their Master Splinter, or their sensei, their dad, whatever you want to call it. And uh, now I'm finishing up with the four other characters that were released in this first series, which was uh, nine figurines, nine individual figurines. And these are all the bad guys, in a way. Uh, I don't want to give a lot of spoilers out uh, from the movie, which I was finally able to see. Uh, and I talked a little bit more about the movie and what I thought of it in the first um, part. So if you haven't seen that yet, you can go ahead and watch it on my channel. So yeah, they are kind of bad guys. And then, you know, <laughs> so, some stuff happens. Uh, and if you saw the movie, you know what, what I'm talking about. And uh, I have over here uh, Bebop, Rocksteady, Leatherhead and Superfly. And Superfly, I can say I think I can say that that he is the main bad guy and I think he's the only one that uh, we haven't actually met or seen in previous adaptations of the TMNT um, but he kind of reminds me at least of like uh, Baxter Stockman's um, you know fly uh, version fly form so maybe there was something uh, coming from there uh, but uh, otherwise I think he's like a brand new character correct me if I'm wrong but I do think he is a brand new uh, character and you know all of the designs of these characters I think it's they just really cool uh, some of them look a little bit weird but you know they added some new things and uh, I, I, I like it I think it was really a fun movie and uh, fun character designs some choices were a little bit uh, more um, questionable at least in my opinion but uh, I will talk about that in uh, just a second when I get to the uh, certain character um, but as usual I'm going to show you guys a up close of the boxes uh, they have pretty much the same design but they have some different info on them and after that of course I will unbox the figurines and we'll see uh, them up close what they come with and uh, their articulation and uh, all of the other stuff so let's get started so starting off, I just thought that I'll show you guys the main battery in the box first. So as you can see, we have a cardboard background, which is really, really retro, uh, at least in my opinion, because it does represent a purple, a really nice shade of purple, by the way. Um, it's just my camera, I know it fades the colors for some reason, uh, of a brick wall. And it has like ooze dripping on it and like some graffitis and some signs over here and there. So it's really a fun design, I really like it. Uh, up there it says Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And I, I really love the logo, I think it looks really uh, like, uh, it just really like pops. And it just really, I don't know, it, it gives me a, a feeling like, like, I don't know, like these turtles are like really strong and it's like something really cool. <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain it guys, but I really like this uh, logo. I think it's just really, really cool. And uh, yeah, whoever designed that, it's just... Uh, kudos because it's just really really cool now up there it also says Nickelodeon as you can see and we have this uh, like plastic uh, bubble uh, type of um, packaging that you unfortunately have to have to rip off from the cardboard uh, if you want to open the figurines which I will do but I will definitely keep these uh, these awesome uh, cardboard backgrounds because uh, you know it's just a fun collectible uh, for us uh, uh, out of the box collectors now basically all of the boxes have the four turtles here on the side or the like the um, um, artworks of them uh, 
with the exception of the four turtles and if you again if you saw the first part of this video you know what I'm talking about and here in the you can see the the figurine and what he comes with inside he comes with quite a few weapons and some other cool stuff on that like weapon rack over there in the back again really retro and over here it says his name which is super super fly and it says he's the fly guy <laughs> obviously and over here it says uh, playmates toys ages four and up so basically these are uh, also designed for children not just for collectors and what a great way by the way to uh, to um, for children to get to know the TMNT franchise I think it's a a fun uh, fun thing to share if you are a parent with your kids you know a way to uh, show them the TMNT world now on the back of the box we get the artworks which is interesting so you don't get the pictures of the other figurines released in this first series you get the artworks of them and of course we have the four brothers and Master Splinter, Rocksteady, Bebop, Superfly and Leatherhead. By the way, the artwork uh, of these is really really cool and really... Some of them like fly, uh, Superflies um, is like really scary at the same time, so I really like it. And I really like it how the design is like, like it, a huge hole uh, punched to the wall over here. It says Nickelodeon over there again, Playmates Toys. And it says collect them all uh, over there in that little uh, blue screen in different languages. There is like a description over here and it says uh, busting out of the New York sewers are four Bodish's brothers ready to kick butt. Born from mysterious mutant ooze, these tubular turtles and their radical red dad have trained in the art of ninjutsu uh, to become a bad guy bashing super team. With their buddy April O'Neil, they are about to face the gnarliest mutants the world has ever seen. So yeah, there you go. That's the synopsis, which, which we kind of already knew. I mean, uh, if you haven't been living on the rock, you know what uh, and who the turtles are. And each figurine comes with this little uh, like uh, personality card, or uh, I'm not sure what to call it. Uh, and over here we get a picture of the character as well. It says Superfly. And it only says Mutant Menace Meter in different languages and he has like a 5 uh, one so uh, he is uh, super mean and super scary. And yeah, it, it says in different languages. Um, interesting because some of the other characters have more stuff about them, especially if you saw the first part. Um, you know what I'm talking about? So uh, he only has this Mutant Menace Meter over here. Uh, and of, of also uh, like the website where you can uh, go ahead and visit the movie and of course Playmates Toys as well. So yeah, that's the uh, box for uh, Superfly. Up next we have a uh, Rocksteady, which we already know and love from previous adaptations. And honestly, he has, in my opinion, probably one of the weirdest designs in this. Not a huge fan, but it's it's uh, it's it's something. <laughs> uh, he looks re really interesting, and basically the whole box design is the same as Superfly had, but instead over here it says Rocksteady and it says Mutant Muscle, which, looking at the picture, you can uh, really believe that he is full of uh, muscles and he is one uh, mean machine. And uh, this is the back of the box. Basically, again, it's the same. And over here it says Rocksteady. By the way, his his artwork is really uh, scary too, <laughs> in my opinion. And his mutant Minus Meter is three, so uh, Superfly was more, way more meaner than him. So yeah, that is uh, Rocksteady. Now, of course, we have Rocksteady's uh, old old body, old pal uh, Bebop, which is a jacked up warthog. And he does looks really, he does look really like similar to uh, other designs we've seen of him, especially he reminds me of like the the um, 2014 or 16 uh, movie um, directed by uh, Michael Bay design. I think Rocksteady looks really really close to that. Uh, but yeah, he looks really cool and uh, he comes with some really awesome weapons as well, as far as I can see in the box. And 
here is his card it says bebop and his mutant menace meter is three so it's basically the same as rock studies which is you know um something to be expected since they are like uh, besties i guess <laughs> i could call them that uh, although they sometimes fight but they seem to be on the same level if you know what i mean so yeah this is rocksteady and last but not least we have leatherhead the crocodile as it says it's he is the rocking croc now it's um a, i was talking about like weird choices for this movie and um one of the weirdest choices, in my opinion, came with him. And this may be a spoiler if you haven't seen the movie, so again, spoiler. Um, he is actually a she in the movie, if I got that correctly, uh, from the voice actor. Uh, so I don't know how, but they decided to make Leatherhead uh, a female crocodile instead of a, a guy. Like he was like in previous adaptations, uh, like basically all throughout all of the TMNT uh, where um, he appeared, he was a guy, uh, mostly a scientist. Uh, in the first ever TMNT, he was like in this um, Australian kind of uh, hunter type of design. Um, but yeah, hey, they they decided to go with a female crocodile. I don't know why. I guess to balance out the genders or something in the movie uh, but that really um, I thought that it was a weird choice and uh, I don't know why they decided to do that I don't think it was like really necessary but you know it is what it is so yeah it's a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> it's a she now um, but otherwise the design doesn't really give that off to me so uh, I probably will forget about it and still call it a he Sorry if I do, um, but yeah, it was just uh, something uh, really surprising to me that they went with a female crocodile uh, instead of a male. male. And uh, over here it says again Leatherhead, uh, Newton Menace Meter, and it's also a tree. So it's the, basically the same level as Bebop and Rocksteady. And uh, yeah, so that's about it for these really cool uh, boxes. I really, again, really love the design. Now let me just unbox them, we will take a closer look at them, what they come with, because they do come with a lot of stuff on these um, weapon racks, and I'm not sure if I'm going to take those off of those racks yet, um, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, so I'll be right back. And I'm back, and as you can see, I have unboxed my four uh, bad guys and girl over here. And they are really cool. They are really unique in their own. And uh, I really like how they just, you know, gave them so much, like, difference and, you know, different molds. And they are different in their articulation as well. So as I'm going to go along and show you uh, guys each and every figurine up close, I'm going to talk about their articulation as well. Because, as I said before, they are uh, different from one another and I can't really... Uh, put them under the same hat, let's say, so uh, they are really, really cool. Now, uh, before we uh, get onto the figurines themselves, I wanted to show you guys their, their weapon racks that uh, they uh, come with, because uh, they do come just like the turtles, uh, if you saw my previous uh, review of the turtles, uh, these guys also come with their own uh, weapon racks, and uh, they are full of of interesting uh, and uh, cool like weapons and uh, related stuff. Now uh, another thing that I wanted to mention about the weapon racks is that uh, three of the characters have the silver colored version and uh, one character, uh, Leatherhead, has uh, the that orangish brown uh, weapon rack. Don't know what's up with that but why or why they chose those colors for them but that's how uh, they came and of course uh, the weapon racks uh, or the weapons on the racks don't have uh, any like paint details so again if you are into like customizing and lo love painting like uh, uh, teeny tiny stuff like this there's a good uh, DIY project for you to um, to uh, do uh, 
Uh, but uh, I myself, I'm not going to take down the, the weapons from the racks because I'm afraid that I will lose them and uh, I don't really have any uh, place to put them either. So I'm just keeping them on the racks. But let's take a closer look at those. So I'm going to start off with Rocksteady over here. And this is his. So he has the silver colored one. And as you can see, he has a lot of weapons. So we have one of these uh, really cool looking knives over here. And he also has this uh, sewer lid, which kind of looks uh, interesting because it's like, as you can see, it has a hole in it. And that's because it has like a handle in the back. So this is kind of like a uh, shield, I guess. It looks a little bit weird, but still cool. Now up here, he has this really interesting and really like futuristic, I have to say, uh, like huge uh, gun. And over here on the side, he has this huge like sledgehammer which honestly it looks more menacing in my opinion than uh, the the gun itself. So yeah, that's uh, rock studies. Uh, now we have Bebops, which is also like uh, silver colored. And he has kind of like similar items to uh, rock studies. So he also has like this gun, which kind of has like a drill head on it. And actually it looks really really similar to the gun that he's holding in his hand like his main weapon that was not not attached to the uh, weapon rack he also comes with this uh it kind of also looks like a sewer lid but i don't think it is a sewer lid it has these real real uh, weird like uh, circles on it. it kind of looks like a piece of wood or something but it works the same way as you can see this is the handle so he can hold it as a shield he also has this uh uh, another type of weapon I'm not sure what to call it like um, it's like basically like a, a stick and it has like uh, some uh, I think barbed wire uh, around it so again really <laughs> menacing looking and he also has like this huge huge knife it almost almost goes on to the to the side of or size of a like a small sword or something um, so yeah that's uh, Bebops uh, now we have leather heads, um, and this is as you can see in that orangish brown color. So she has, she also has this gun, which again looks really uh, futuristic. We love the details on the handle part over there. It looks really interesting. Kind of looks like it has some little plants over there. I'm not sure if you can see that, like over there. Really interesting. Uh, she also comes with this uh, fishing rod. Because it does look like a fishing rod to me. I uh, don't know what's up with that, but it looks pretty interesting. Uh, she also comes with a bear trap. And also another one of those uh, hunter knives. I think it's the same exact mold as, um, as Rocksteady's had on his weapon rack. So yeah, this is uh, leather heads. And last but not least... We have a uh, Superfly, and his is also silver colored, and he also has like really interesting pieces like this gun. It just looks super weird and interesting. It's like made out of uh, of like junk or something. Uh, he also has like a, and I think this this weapon is just absolutely hilarious. So he has like a fly sweater uh, or swatter. Fly sweater, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Fly sweater, but uh, he instead of a fly, it uh, has like a little turtle <laughs> on it. And actually, the the this top part kind of looks like a meat cleaver as as well. So it's it's really uh, funny and uh, cool looking in my opinion. And he also comes with like a bunch of those little uh, chemical bottles in a rack, and also this one that just has like a some type of uh, chemical. Uh, liquid coming out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, Superfly's uh, weapon rack. Now uh, let's move on to the actual figurines. So I'm going to start off with the main body, which is Superfly, and he is a huge fly, basically. So uh, he really uh, does stand up to his name. He is a Superfly, and he is like a dark. Uh, blue color it has kind of like some purple shades in that blue but i'm not sure if that is visible on camera he has huge red eyes and of course the face of a fly you can see some teeth inside there there we go 
Uh, he also has like uh, some hair in the back. A little bit of a kind of like a disco style hair, if you ask me. Uh, now, as you can see, his top body is like huge and really bulky, while his legs is all all kind of uh, skinny. And on this side, he has like a huge arm, which uh, even like some wings showing over there. And he has like a huge claw at the end. And this hand, on the other hand, <laughs> is like a normal one. And he's holding his gun, which is kind of like his main weapon, because this was like separate from the rack. And it looks again really futuristic, really interesting, as you can see. And uh, it has like this little, kind of like a little, it looks like a hat on it, but it's really not a hat. So this is how his uh, gun looks up close. So really interesting. Now besides that, he also has these two little hands over here in the front, kind of like a kind of like a T-Rex, T-Rex's little arms. And his feet, by the way, end in these claws, again, just like this hand. Some little uh, details of little like fur or, or maybe those are like kind of like uh, thorns or something. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like fur. And on the back, of course, he has wings which are yellow and they are see-through, as you can see. And they are pretty large as well. Now, uh, the wings are removable, by the way. He was, the wings were separate when you uh, get him out of the box. Just be careful because it's kind of hard to push it in. And after that, I'm not sure how well you can take them out. So be careful, don't uh, break them. Now, as you can see, he is wearing some uh, torn up clothes, like this... Uh, green shirt and kind of like this yellow tie a little bit of like short brown pants and there's also like a a shoe uh, on this side of the leg that's kind of like the the leg went through it and the, stu the shoe is uh, still um, stuck to his uh, foot I think that is awesome in design and really hilarious now there was a like a theory that um, uh, he was supposed to be like Baxter Stockman and, you know, would turn into a fly just like in some of the previous adaptations of the Turtles. We are uh, familiar with that story. Uh, they kind of dropped that for the movie from as far as I know. And uh, that's because, I mean, I don't know why they dropped the, the, that line. But uh, the, if you take a look at Baxter Stockman's uh, clothes at the, at the start of the movie, you can see some similarities. So... I think it was like a last minute change of plans and they no longer like change the design of the character. Again, don't know why they did that, but uh, it is what it is and it's like a fun fact. So uh, regarding his articulation, you can of course uh, move his head to the sides and not really up and down. So his head only moves to the sides as far as I can tell. Maybe a little bit of pivoting, but really it's really limited so goes to the sides the arms of course move up and down and they go to the side as well as you can see you can also uh, move his elbow it does go up and down and you can twist and turn it as well there's not articulation in his worst and of course you can also move this arm as well and you can twist and turn the claw part But it does not move up and down, so you can only twist and turn it. And honestly, I, I think it's a missed opportunity that they didn't include a little joint over there so that you can actually open his claws. So it's like permanently stuck in this kind of like a ring uh, position, unfortunately. So uh, I think they should have at least uh, included a uh, articulation point over there. You cannot move the little arms. There is no waist articulation. But you can move the legs, so it, the, they do go up and down quite easily, as you can see, and to the sides as well. You can twist and turn it. There's also a joint in the knee. You can move that as well, as you can see, and also twist and turn it. And uh, that's about it, so you cannot move the, uh, the wings or, you know, the feet. That's as far as Superfly's uh, articulation goes, but I think he is a super awesome character, uh, especially for a main bad guy 
I think it fits him and he looks awesome. I think he's one of my favorite uh, baddies or if not the favorite from um, this uh, adaptation of the turtles. Now moving on, next up we have Leatherhead, who I mentioned in this video many times that it's a she now, which is interesting because honestly she does not look like it and it, I wouldn't have expected it to be a she, but when you know, she first spoke I was really surprised. But otherwise I think uh, she looks really uh, cool and it's a, again a great homage to the old uh, style of Leatherhead from the original like uh, Turtles cartoon. Uh, now he, she kind of blends into my background, sorry about that, because you know it, my background is uh, green and she is also green. She's a little bit darker than my background, but you know my camera is old and always having troubles with the colors. So as you can see she has like the big uh, crocodile snout. She's kind of honestly kind of um, chubby uh, as you can see. I'm not sure if that was like on, I mean, I'm sure it was on purpose, but it, it looks, uh, if they wanted her to m make her like this chubby or, you know, it was just, I don't know, or it, it's, it's something to do with the crocodiles, I don't know, but, you know, as you can see, she has like big neck and like kind of thick uh, body as well. Otherwise, her design, I, I like it, I think it's, it's uh, cool. She's wearing this uh, dark brown like bodysuit. And with a belt here in the front and the little uh, yellow vest and of course the kind of like the crocodile hunter <laughs> style um, big hat with some crocodile teeth going around I really like that and I think it's really fun that uh, like uh, here in the front it's it kind of looks like someone took a bite from the hat as well now, one thing that I'm not a big fan of her is these goggles. I think they look a little bit weird, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know why they uh, did that, but I guess maybe if they just gave her like a simple like eyes, it would have uh, looked uh, just way more weirder than with the goggles. So uh, I guess that's what that's uh, what they thought. I don't know. Now, she, as you can see, she also has this little uh, bag here in the back, which is also like a brown color. It has a strap, and this one actually kind of moves, so you can maybe take it off of her. I did not try. I don't think it would go uh, um, through her head, or maybe on the lower part of her body, um, but it does move, so it's like not in the mold of the body. Uh, it's a separate piece. And here is her weapon, main weapon, which is a kind of like a shotgun, as far as I can tell. Or maybe I'm wrong because, as I said before, I'm not big with weapons, but I do think it's a shotgun, so you can just take it out of her hand and uh, put it in this little bag. It should be able to go in there. It kind of does, but not all the way, so that's how far it goes. Maybe I'm just putting it in the wrong way, I'm not sure. But it does not go uh, in there like this way, so... Yeah, I think it, it goes in just like this. And... As far as this, so... That's how it looks. And I just noticed that she has like uh, side pockets on her pants, which are pretty cool. She's also wearing like a pair of like those waterproof type of black boots, but on this side uh, her little fingers uh, or toes actually are, like sticking out of the boots, so they are already like ruined. But it still looks uh, pretty fun and cool. I, I like her design. I'm just saying that it's a teeny tiny bit for uh, weird for my taste, but and over here in the back her uh, tail is like sticking out since, you know, she is a crocodile. Or maybe alligator. I'm honestly never sure uh, which one is she. Maybe in some other sessions she's a crocodile, in others like alligator. I'm not sure. But with that being said, uh, her articulation is similar to superflies, but not the same. So you can also move her head. But again, it only goes to the side, so no up and down movement. 
you can move her tiny arms and they do go to the side as well as around I think you can do a 360 with that I just don't want to force it uh, you can also move the arms from the elbow they do twist and turn and move up and down and interestingly she does have some articulation in her worst as well so you can twist that around and also move it up and down it's just the joint is so teeny tiny I'm not sure if you can see that there we go that doesn't really want to bend I think I have to heat the hands up to be able to move them up and down so I'm not going to force it now but I am pretty sure you can uh, move the hands up and down because there's that's uh, that's why the joint is over there she also has worse uh, not worse uh, waist articulation as you can see so it does move to the sides which is pretty cool you can of course move uh, the legs up and down and twist it around it's just a little bit limited by her uh, pants and the pockets she also has a uh, knee articulation so you can bend the knee just like that and she also has articulation in her foot there's also a joint over there as you can see so you can kind of move it up and down and twist it to the sides as well so I think that's really cool and she also has some articulation in the tail so you can twist and turn it and also move it up and down so she is a really nicely and well articulated figurine I really like that I think they should have included more articulation with Superfly and some of the other uh, figurines similar to what Leatherhead has uh, but yeah so that is Leatherhead now moving on we have our big warthog over here bebop and he honestly looks really really similar to um, previous adaptations like the michael bay movies or uh, like the 90s uh, bebop as well he looks different from uh, definitely from the, the 2012 version because that guy was really skinny but this one is a fat big warthog as you can see and he looks honestly cool. I like it that they didn't change as much on him as uh, some of the other characters. Um, but first of all, I'm going to show you guys the, the main weapon that he comes with because I'm afraid that I'm going to knock it out of his uh, hand. So this is how it looks. As I said before, it's kind of like a bigger version of the, of the gun that he had on his weapon rack. It still has that drill part. Looks really menacing and really futuristic too in my opinion does not have any uh, like paint details on it which is a little bit weird because all of them uh, have uh, on their main weapons like some uh, details painted but he does not have that so yeah interesting but it's a cool uh, gun uh, if you ask me looks really cool so yeah that is his weapon now back to the figurine so this is his uh, face he has those huge teeth and uh, the little nose ring the again really like futuristic shades on and uh, pink hair he is one ugly guy for sure but i i still really like it he also has like a little belly button ring and uh, the little red vest i really like how his shoulder pads are like uh, turtle shells if my camera would just Like how his shoulder pads or uh, or little turtle shells, both sides again really a homage to the old one if I remember correctly. This is how his vest looks from the back. Now, a little bit weird. I'm not sure if that's a, like a paint error or or they did that on purpose. But kind of the the top part of the vest kind of goes onto his neck, at least the paint, and it looks a little bit weird in my opinion. Not sure why they did it. Uh, he has the wow word uh, like spray painted on him on his chest so that's uh, interesting and he also has this like uh, belt or sash uh, on him over here he has like some uh, hand grenades too but those are not painted as you can see some spiky bracelets on both sides and some black leather pants one of them has like a, a uh, knee pad 
the other one is missing it and he also has like some chains around his waist uh, but those are not painted unfortunately as well his tail, uh, his tail as you can see it's in the mold over there it's kind of like sticking out from his uh, pants but it's not painted so yeah he is like lacking some uh, paint details but I'm glad that we got uh, at least some of that and also as you can see he's wearing some sneakers so yeah big dude uh, but uh, still really fun and uh, I really like it how he Reminds me of the old Bebop. Now, as far as his articulation goes, you can move his head kind of around. Actually, not only to the sides, but it goes all around, but it does not move up and down. You can, of course, move his arms up and down. And they do go to the side, but be careful because it is limited by the, the turtle shoulder pads. You can, of course, move it from the elbow up and down if I can just hold it there we go so you can see that it moves and there is some twist and turn in it but it doesn't really want to move so I'm not going to force it there's also articulation in the worst but you can only twist and turn it around so there is no uh, up and down there is no joint over there no, no up and down movement uh, there is no uh, waist articulation, but you can move his legs. They are again a little bit limited by the pants, but they do turn to the sides as you can see. And you can also move the knee, just like that. And uh, there is no articulation in the foot. so. That's about it for Bebop. That's uh, how articulated he is. He has way less articulation than a Leatherhead for sure, but you know, still pretty cool. I just wish that they painted some more details on him, especially his tail, like it's 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 a main part of him. So I don't know why they skipped that, but you know that is. And last but not least, we have uh, Rocksteady, who, in my opinion, had the most drastic changes from his like original or pre pretty much any other adaptation uh, of Rocksteady. He looks um, weird, in my opinion, way too short, too. I mean, he's kind of the same size as Biba, but I don't know, his, his neck, like, he's, like, as you can see, is like pushed in and it kind of reminds me of like the hunchback of Notre Dame or something like that I don't know he has a weird um, design for sure I'm not sure if I like it or not but it is what it is so we get Rocksteady I'm going to show you guys again his main weapon because I'm going to take it out of his, out of his hand so this is how it looks again really futuristic kind of looks kind of like multiple um, like machine guns or something combined combined together Again, he, his main weapon is also like missing um, any paint details or, or any, any details at all. So uh, that's weird, but that's how his looks. Otherwise, it looks pretty cool and it kind of looks like he can hold it with both hands. I think he can. So that's his weapon. Now back to Rocksteady, so as you can see, as I said before, he has this like kind of like a hunch over here, but I like his face. At least it has the big horns, double horns, the teeth, nose. Really interesting. It also has kind of like uh, I'm not sure if those supposed to be like arm uh, arm hair or like tattoos on both sides because it does look the same. So I am not exactly sure what those were supposed to be. Uh, he's wearing like a yellow uh, t-shirt, which is kind of uh, I don't know uh, like. It looks like he has worn this for a long time because on this side it still looks like a t-shirt but on this side it kind of looks just like a um, a uh, shirt without like without a sleeve or or it's kind of like when you pull the fabric I'm not sure if you uh, understand what I'm talking about but it, it does look worn uh, in my eyes and he also has this like sash going around or like a belt I think he has some Yes, he does have some bullets on it for his gun, but those are not painted. As you can see, it's not uh, missing the details. 
Uh, he also has like some chains around his neck and I think that's like a hand grenade over there. Not sure how well visible that is. But again missing uh, some pain details. He also has like a kind of like a spiky bracelet on this side. It's not on the other side. He's wearing some bra brown uh, camo pants. Or maybe those are just some dirt spots on it. I am again not sure because on the top part I don't see any design on it. So maybe those are just like simple brown uh, pants. And uh, here in the front we only have like the mod splatters or, or something like that. Maybe oil. I'm not sure. And of course he has these big combat boots, which are dark uh, brown, a little bit like a grayish brown color. They look cool regardless. So yeah, Rocksteady has a really uh, new uh, design. Uh, the clothes do remind me of the old one, of course, but otherwise he is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if he's like a fan favorite or not because of his new design uh, i know some people were laughing at him and i can understand why but you know it's it's a new something new and interesting now as far as his articulation goes his head can move to the side as you can see and you can see it really well uh, but there is no up and down movement over there especially since his head like is really big um, there is no waist articulation, but you can move his arms. They do move up and down and to the side as well. And not only just from here, but from here too. So uh, on this side, he kind of has like a double articulation. While on this side, he only has one. So that's interesting. Uh, you can, of course, move the elbow part up and down. I don't think there's a twist and turn in the elbow, no, there is not, but you can twist and turn his worst, and uh, there is no up and down movement in the worst, because there is no joint over there, and of course you can move the leg, legs up and down, and they do not go to the sides, but they have uh, that twist and turn uh, articulation in them, and there is also like a movement in the knee you can bend it but you cannot turn to the side the knee so you can only uh, bend it and there is no articulation in the lower part of the feet so again pretty limited um, really similar if not the same articulation points as on uh, bebop but that is rock study from the mutant mayhem uh, tmnt version and that's about it for this review, or actually the part 2 of my TMNT Mutant Mayhem uh, figurine reviews of the bad guys now. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more action figure reviews like this or other kind of toy and door reviews I do on my channel. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, the link will appear on the screen and you can go ahead and comment over there if you... Uh, want to state your opinion about these figurines, what do you think of the designs and you know overall the movie if you saw it because I unfortunately have to turn uh, off the comment section uh, because of YouTube policies and you know TMNT is mainly targeted towards kids so um, that it is what it is but um, I'm interested in hearing your guys opinions of uh, these characters and you know their designs and what do you think of uh, some some of the changes they did and I would like to thank you guys so much for watching and you know I will see you in the next video whatever will it be so I will see you guys then. Bye!